This is by far the largest video on ChatGPT I've made so far. OpenAI has once again made some game-changing announcements that will blow their competition out of the water. From Dolly getting a new model to being able to have a voice conversation with ChatGPT, this is a video you don't want to miss. This is Blaj, you're watching AI Innovations, and first up on our radar is a series of massive announcements by OpenAI, which we might as well cover in chronological order. First, Dolly is finally coming to ChatGPT Plus in October. This was a long time coming and oh boy was it worth the wait. Not only is it integrating with ChatGPT, it's going to be released as a whole new model called Dolly 3. Let's break down what they've told us about it in their blog post. They started their blog post by explaining that Dolly focuses on simplifying the prompting part of image generation. If you've used image generation tools like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, which are amazing tools by themselves, you'll know just how hard it is to get the desired result without prompt engineering. OpenAI explains that Dolly is capable of much better natural language understanding compared to other AI image generation tools, making it much more accessible to the average user. And Dolly 3 expands on this by being able to understand much more nuance and detail compared to previous iterations. This will, of course, also translate into much more accurate and detailed images. To give you an idea of how much more detailed the images are in Dolly 3, here are OpenAI's example images shown for Dolly 2, and here are the examples shown for the new Dolly 3. The difference is mind-blowing. Here's another side-by-side -side comparison they showed using the exact same prompt. You can probably guess which one belongs to Dolly 3. It's now also much better at generating details on humans, like hands, which have been notoriously hard for AI to generate correctly. Another big new feature they showed off is that it can now generate text inside of images. It's not perfect, of course, so you might still see a typo or alien letter here and there, but this really opens up the use cases for Dolly. For example, you'll be able to make stylized logos, infographics, comics and memes, slides, graphs, charts, and much more. OpenAI's co-founder Greg Brockman also showcased a few examples on Twitter, which you can take a look at. So how will all of this work with ChatGPT? Well, apparently, you'll be able to prompt ChatGPT for an image in your own words, and ChatGPT will generate a prompt for Dolly 3 for you, which will automatically deliver the image to you inside the chat itself. If you're not happy with your image, ChatGPT can even tweak it if you provide a follow-up prompt explaining what it should change. Sounds sort of like the Generate a Fill tool in Photoshop, but without actually selecting an area of the picture. They have yet to show us an example of this, so I wonder how good it will be, but I have my hopes up. This would be a big deal, of course, since fixing an image you mostly like can get you the intended result much faster than trying to generate the perfect image from scratch over and over again. There are also a few other noteworthy statements OpenAI has made in their blog post. First, they said that all images you create with Dolly 3 are yours to use for reprinting, selling, or merchandising. Second, they're limiting its ability to generate violent, adult, or hateful content, same as with the previous models. Third, it will decline your prompt if asked for an image of a public figure by name. And lastly, Dolly 3 is designed to decline requests for an image in the style of a living artist emphasis on living, and creators will be able to opt out their images from training their future models. I think this last part is important and might actually convince some artists to give generative AI a shot. If you didn't know, intellectual property when it comes to AI image generation has been a widely debated topic, especially among artists. It's good to see OpenAI addressing this in some way, even if it's not required by law as of right now. Last thing I want to mention is that they've announced they're working on a provenance classifier a tool that will help identify whether an image was generated by Dolly 3 or not. I wonder if it works with invisible watermarks like Google Synth ID tool. If you're wondering what that is, I made a video on the topic, which you can check out in the link below. And while you're at it, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel so I can bring you more quality content. Anyway, just a few days after this massive announcement, they put out an even bigger one. They announced that ChatGPT will finally be able to accept images as input, which is something they promised us for GPT-4 way back when it was released. You can take a picture of something and talk about it with ChatGPT. An everyday example OpenAI provided in their blog post is that you can take a shot of the inside of your fridge and ask ChatGPT what you can make for dinner with the food you have available. There are a lot of use case examples already floating around though with people taking pictures of a website schema on a whiteboard and ChatGPT creating a functioning website based on just that. 
it can also design your website based on a screenshot of another website. The other part of this update is that it unlocks voice conversations with the ChatGPT mobile app. That means you can have a hands-free, back-and-forth conversation with it. You can choose between five different voices, and this will only be available for the mobile app as of right now. This is a big deal for accessibility, since it will assist users who have problems with writing. It can also be used in most other languages with a lot of accuracy, but you can expect some pronunciation and grammatical errors, depending on the language's prominence online. This should only improve as more users start talking with it and providing it with more parameters to learn from. An interesting use case came from a Twitter user called Lillian Wang. She said she managed to have an emotional personal conversation with ChatGPT using voice mode and compared it to therapy. This does sound useful and I think it'll be widely used in the future, but there are some problems with this right now. First, Lillian is actually an OpenAI employee, so is probably biased and trying to shine a positive light on ChatGPT. Second, while the conversation might have been personal, as she stated, it was far from private. If you look at the OpenAI privacy policy, it states that they may save the content from all conversations with ChatGPT, either voice or text, and use it to train their models. And third, ChatGPT isn't a trained therapist, so there's a possibility it might do more harm than good. Bear these points in mind if you're going to use it for therapy. Currently, the conversations are back and forth, but I can't wait until the day they make it completely seamless. Imagine having it listen in on your meetings and, privacy concerns aside, chimes in whenever it hears uncertainty, a dilemma, a question, or has a suggestion on how to improve something. For this to be effective, it should also learn to interrupt you, or your meeting, at appropriate times. It would basically act as a personal assistant. It would bring up any relevant data from your company's database in an instant and give strategic advice on various issues. Both the voice and image tools are coming to ChatGPT Plus users over the next two weeks. I'd really love to hear what ideas you guys have on how to use these new tools. Drop them down in the comments below. The last announcement OpenAI made was that browsing with Bing is returning to ChatGPT. If you don't know, this was already a possibility at one point, but has been disabled for a few months due to issues around ChatGPT being able to access website data that is normally behind a paywall. Personally, I didn't find it all that useful in its first iteration. It was very slow and full of errors. But that was just my experience. The new version went live immediately after the announcement on the 27th of September. This new version is much faster and is useful for situations when you require up-to-date information. The actual announcement post was a bit misleading though. It claimed ChatGPT was no longer limited to data before September 2021, but that's false. That is only true for the information it gets from the websites it browses through in the response to your prompt. The large language model itself is still the same as it used to be. That's it for OpenAI's announcements, but while we're on the topic, I'd like to mention a few rumors going around. The first, according to the Wall Street Journal, is that OpenAI might be planning to sell shares to raise its valuation from $29 billion to between $80 to $90 billion. This would come from employees selling their shares instead of the company creating new ones. I'm sure investors and speculators will be seeking exposure like crazy since the company is doing quite well. According to the information, OpenAI is on track to generate more than $1 billion of revenue over the next 12 months which is much higher than expected. They cite a person with direct knowledge of the situation. How reliable. The second rumor, according to the information, is that OpenAI CEO Sam Altman is in talks with a former Apple product designer, Johnny Ive, about an AI hardware project. The founder and CEO of the investment company SoftBank, Masayoshi Son, is also allegedly involved. This is unfortunately all we know on the subject and it appears to be in the very early stages, as Altman and Ive have only started discussions about what form the AI hardware might take. Your guess is as good as mine on this one. I know for sure that it almost definitely won't be a localized form of an AI system, as that isn't really feasible currently due to the vast amounts of computing power needed. I have to say, OpenAI is blowing its competition out of the water with these announcements. And bear in mind that some of these features are exclusive to the separate modes on ChatGPT. For example, browsing is separate from plugins and advanced data analysis. I wonder if the DALI 3 integration will be too. 
Now just imagine how powerful and useful ChatGPT will become once they merge all of these together. It'll be able to use all of these tools at its disposal to respond to your prompts. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you enjoyed it. You can watch the last video by clicking the link on screen now and you can also check out the other video YouTube thinks you might like. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Blaj and this is AI Innovations.